Whenever you're designing a screen, you have to think about the amount of space that you have to work with. And today, the amount of space varies widely because people are using devices of many different sizes. We need to design not only for someone sitting in an office looking at a desktop, but also for someone out in the field with a mobile phone or a tablet. That reality has given rise to mobile responsive design, which is really just a set of ideas and practices for building screens that look great on small, medium, and large devices, and in either a portrait or landscape orientation. Here are a few basic things to consider. In general, mobile devices have less available width. On a desktop, the width is greater than the height. You need to sort of sort out which elements absolutely have to be included on the screen, and which elements are optional. When you're designing for smaller screens, you should focus on the mandatory elements first. You know, what do we want the user to see, even if they're looking at the smallest possible screen? Then we can try to add the nice to have elements on larger screens that have more available width. So there are many benefits to design responsive applications compared to designing separate applications for mobile and non-mobile. A couple of those are, well, first off, the development costs are lower overall. And there's only one data model to maintain instead of many. It lets you support an infinite number of device sizes with one design. And it makes it easy to get consistent UI and functionality across various screens of various projects takes less time to train operators, and there are fewer mistakes when the apps are consistent. There also happen to be a few drawbacks to responsive design. Certainly, there's no one strategy that fits all projects. Every project is different based on its content and the context. There's also a learning curve, of course, here. It takes time to get fully proficient in it. But that's true of any new tool you use, and the skills you gain are definitely worth it here. So that's just a couple of really simple overview points of the responsive design concept. So let's get into some specific design strategies. And for that, uh, Travis, I'm going to hand it over to you to take it from here. All right, perfect. Thank you, Don. So getting your design started is a lot easier when you have a strategy. So let's talk about some of the common layout strategies that work well across desktops and mobile devices. These strategies combine containers, columns, and breakpoints in different ways to define how your screen will change to fit different screen sizes. The first is called mostly fluid. This pattern mostly consists of a fluid grid that reflows the main content and vertically stacks columns on smaller screens. On medium or large screens, it usually remains the same size and adjusts the margins to fit the width. The main advantage is that it usually requires only one breakpoint between small and large screens. In case you don't know, the breakpoint is the point where there will be a big change in the application's layout so that it's using the space most effectively. Mostly Fluid is pretty simple because it has one breakpoint, so it works well for simple applications, reporting, and documents. So you can see a little example of we're talking about here with the Mostly Fluid. There's that one breakpoint on the small display. Of course, you get everything stacked on top of each other. We're on the uh, medium and larger displays. You get that content, but you just adjust the margins. You see the spacing on the ends there over our larger displays. You see a lot of websites that follow this paradigm out there. So one example of that here is BMW's website. And so on larger displays, they uh, have some padding on the outside, and then ultimately when it gets down to that smaller display, everything's kind of stacked in that column uh, format. So this is a good example of mostly fluid. Another design strategy is called column drop, and this is a pattern for full width multi-column layouts. This is very, very similar to the last one, mostly fluid, but without the fluid content because the size of the elements stay the same. It stacks columns vertically as the width of the window becomes too narrow for the content. This pattern works really well for simple applications and dashboards. And as you can see here, that on the largest display, we've got those three columns. Everything is next to each other. We have enough real estate for that. And as we get smaller, we start basically dropping a column down. And uh, so here we just have two columns 
with that third being dropped down at the bottom. And with, of course, all of this stuff at the bottom is, is you can get to through scrolling. And then you get down here to the smallest displays and everything is dropped in a vertical column. So very similar to, to Mostly Fluid, but it can have multiple breakpoints here. So a good example of this is, there's lots of them out there, but uh, this is one that we throws here, the Boston Globe. And as you can see, how we have the three columns on the large, and a lot of news sites do this, right? Where you then drop to two, and then drop to that single column. Where that column drop is a very common paradigm, and there's some great ways that we can accomplish that, of course, in perspective. The next strategy is the layout shifter strategy, and this is the most responsive pattern. It has multiple breakpoints across several different screen widths, and it has different layouts across those breakpoints. It swaps components, not just the layout. The content moves around instead of reflowing or dropping under other columns. Because of that, the layout shifter is more complex to maintain, but it's a good strategy to use for complex applications and complex dashboards. And it's one that you see a lot, especially from you know desktop websites that on desktop to when they're on a mobile device, um, because they want to shift things around for that mobile device to be oriented in a much better way. So a good example of this is Google Maps, where on a desktop you can see the orientation of the map and the information, the directions on the left, and then on a mobile device, how that is then shifted around so that the actions are at the bottom there, the search is at the top. This concept is very common and You'll see that a lot, especially with moving the navigation buttons uh, down to the bottom, whereas on a desktop, it might be to the left or to the top. Um, these are very common patterns that people work with. So this is one that you know really it has the most flexibility for sure. Then there's tiny tweaks. And this strategy is, is not a complete mobile responsive design strategy of the entire content. But it's one that as a screen size changes, the layout doesn't change, but there are small changes within the layout, like font sizes are different or image sizes are different, just small little tweaks that happen. And of course, this can be combined with other strategies, but this really works well for nested views or single column layouts uh, where you want things to slightly change as the breakpoints, as you reach those breakpoints. So here's a, a good example of a website that, as you can see, it's very, very similar on all of these sizes. Um, but if you look down on the very small size, mobile size, that this font got smaller here and the image got smaller. And so those little tiny tweaks are important. And so it's not just looking at the entire layout as a whole and how you might approach that, but it's also the little things that you could be modifying too, adding something in or taking something out or or basically having font sizes or variations of, of that change. So this is one that you, know, you could certainly take advantage of. The last pattern is off canvas. And this is one that you see quite a bit. Some content like navigation or menus isn't used very frequently. In this pattern, the con that content is shown when the screen size is large enough. But on smaller screens, this pattern moves the content off screen instead of stacking it vertically. On smaller screens, the content is only one click away, so it's still convenient for the user. So off canvas works really, really well for complex applications and mobile applications where you don't want a lot of scrolling. You're not stacking everything in a column. You're not gonna scroll through that page, but you wanna be able to click a quick little button to basically bring out that content right in that same view. So you're not having to, to scroll or anything like that, but everything can be available when you need it more on demand. So an example of that out there is this website. I mean, you, you see this example everywhere with all the navigations that are there. If you look on the smaller one here, how we have the hamburger icon and that can bring out a menu over here on the right is another icon that can bring out the cart, things like that and it, it keeps everything in that same view. We're not having to scroll through that, whereas we probably would on a larger display because we have more real estate for it. So these strategies, these five strategies, you can certainly take, the, you know, there's lots of good education and, and content out there on these strategies, and you're gonna look at applying one or more of these uh, within Ignition and Perspective.